If you haven't used chat GPT, and by the way, when I query people, have you used it? They ask questions about it, but they have never used it. You would go to chat.openai.com. It's free to sign up, at least still. Uh, sometimes you find it's really busy and they won't let you in. But if you do a refresh, uh, usually within a, a minute or two, you can get in. Uh, it'll come up, uh, you log in, and at the bottom of the screen is a, a query box, and you can type in anything you want. Um, you know, like, um, how do you repair a broken pipe? And it'll run off and think for, well, apparently think, it'll build the answer, and then it'll give it to you. And it could give it to you as paragraphs, it could give it to you as bullet items or numbered items, uh, a numbered list. You can get all kinds of things uh, from that. Now, I think that near term, the biggest play obviously is in the area of content because it's chat GPT, it's content. Uh, some of those answers that it gives you are able to be detected as if they are uh, from an AI. There are certain tokens that are produced that flag it uh, following a pattern because the AI writes in a pattern. Um, and the one that I've started using lately is at openai.openaidetector.hf.space. Now, what that does is it just gives you a block and you can paste whatever you're checking into the block. And at the bottom of the screen, it'll run, it'll run, it'll say processing. And then at the bottom of the screen, it'll say logically human or AI. Actually, it says uh, fake, but ignore that part. So if it comes out and it's 99% fake, you got to do a lot of editing on the text. If it comes out and it says it's 99% human, you're probably okay. My experience is you're going to need some work. Now that in, in and of itself changes the entire uh, future, if you will, of content. You see, it does a couple of things. And I've run benchmarks on this. I was able to write an article and uh, I did it in parts. The top of the article was paragraphs and the bottom of the article was lists, like step one, step two, et cetera. And uh, pretty detailed. I wrote it all out. I got it worked. I took it, ran it through the detector and then I found I could go through and change it. And one of the ways you change it is you say I or we, you put parentheses and clarification phrases. Uh, I throw in, in my opinions or, you know, other things, but it isn't that hard. It took me about a little under an hour and a half to write what would have taken four hours. Just think about that part. Now, if you want to do something, let's suppose I could take any of the questions that Google says people also ask. I can type that in and say, quote, whatever that string is, unquote, as a list written by a 12 year old. Yeah, I know. Think about this. 12 year old, shorter sentences, a list, essentially what it does is even if it comes out as fake, what it did is it just gave me an outline for my content. Mm -hmm. And it'll do that in under a minute. It'll take that keyword and write basically an outline for a page of content in under a minute. 
It'll do all the research. It is based on consensus, which says that a majority of the top ranked sites state these very same things. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's complete, but it'll give you an amazing start on content. So here's where it's gonna impact the world. One, content is gonna be faster, which means it'll take you two hours instead of four hours to write a page. Think about that. That's a cost savings in general. So it's gonna be used, right? All in-house staff is likely to at least do the outline at least that much. The second part is that if it is faster, the price per page may drop. That means it'll become a little bit less expensive. But now think about what it also does. The barrier to entry of a writer just dropped. They don't have to know the topic to write the outline. They don't have to do as much research to write the outline. It'll write it. And you can then take the outline, by the way, and say, using this outline, write a 2,000 word page. Now, it may come out as fake and you have to edit the hell out of it, but I could write a page cheaper. And we can, in theory, face thousands of college students that are now just sitting there making extra money writing content which means a content writer, that occupation is gonna get crushed. If that's what I do for a living, I have competitors falling from the heavens. The next problem you're gonna face is the quality. You see, this is based on consensus. If you read it, if all you're doing is reading it, yeah, it's cool. But when there's thousands of these things, the quality is pretty mediocre overall. It's all really solid average, which is not great. It isn't gonna differentiate you. It isn't gonna establish you as a subject matter expert. It's going to be me too, I have consensus content. The next problem we're gonna face is if people start doing this, there's going to be 80% of the Google index is going to be consensus, in which case the AI writers are reading their own product. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the value of a search result is going to drop or the value of a quality search result is gonna go up. I think the latter. So what will happen to a lot of writers is their real job is going to be taking some of this AI front end that's fast and research centric. They're going to be taking that and they're going to become editors. You're not going to be a writer. You're going to be a hybrid uh, fact checker, image locator, table finder, a uh, wordsmith editor. You're going to be doing the latter one third of the writing process for the entire process, which means not everybody that's a writer is going to succeed at it. But what's gonna happen? Well, if you embrace it, you're gonna have some pretty good content. You're going to have uh, four hours, two hours to write it, and two hours to just wring the hell out of it. The problem with ChatGPT is it doesn't do images, doesn't do tables, doesn't do footnotes, doesn't, doesn't give you the source for their information because it's based on a consensus index. It isn't going to give you that data. There may be some, and again, there's future versions coming out, uh, but my take on it is it is something uh, that we're gonna have to contend with. I have spent hours, too many hours, but hours, what I'll call playing with this thing. And it is truly, truly amazing.
It is truly amazing. Uh, you can say writing, uh, I did this, uh, how to do SEO written as a pirate. And it did it. <laughs> but, you know, it'll do what you tell it to do. With this writing style, give me a list. I can say, you know, there's certain techniques for writing, uh, like sales materials or marketing materials. And you could say writing in a pain, uh, pain and solution method. Uh, and I keep forgetting names of some of these, but writing in a pain and solution method, discuss uh, how to solve a link penalty. And it'll do it and write it in the style that you've identified. There's so much that it, it will automatically do that is just mind blowing. I think that what is going to happen is this is sort of working towards voice answers. This is going to be the voice answer box because people don't care if it's fake or not. They care about getting an answer. And I think this is voice. And I think that we have to contend with it. And I think that we have to know about it. Are you going to use it for FAQs? Are you going to use it to write your uh, technical material or something else? Those are tough questions. And uh, they are lengthy, lengthy, lengthy discussions. I'm thinking of maybe uh, actually scheduling a, a much longer session even just to discuss this. Um, or doing a, a, an ebook or white paper or something. Because when you get into it, the consequences to the business, the consequences to the staffing required to do SEO and content together is totally changing. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have, all of us, everybody here, you're going to have to pay attention to what this is doing. If you have not run it, you have no appreciation for the impact. I mean, you have got to do it. Chat.openai.com, you have just got to try it. If you haven't, spend a couple hours on it. It's addicting, all right? I'll tell you, if you have 15 minutes to spare, chat.openai.com is an excellent way to spend four hours. Think about it. It is truly almost addicting. And I'm going to tell you that I believe that every in-house writer there is, is going to open this up, use it to build the content outline. Then they're going to write it from there. I won't recommend writing a paragraph because it takes a while to rewrite it to be human. But the outline in one minute, you, you got to do it and then you can build it. And the amount of time it takes to write drops 50%. Mm -hmm. It'll drop your cost of content creation, maybe 50%. Don't get me wrong. Let me tell you how we do content here. We do outlines. Got it. The SEO team writes the outline. So we have an outline. Then we have to create it. Then we have to hunt down uh, tables and images and recreate it, make it totally great. Then we have to run through editorial, which is a separate step for our business. So we run it through editorial. It gets finished. Then the client gets to, because they're the subject matter expert, they get to comment on it. We finish the article. Then we run it through SEO. Because you see, when you write an article, it's one thing, but yeah, I'm adding images and yeah, I'm adding tables, but I also have to link to my other content. There's no links coming out of chat. So I have to go through and determine where is the right spot at an SEO level to connect to my existing content. Then I actually have to go to existing content and link to it, so it's not orphaned. There's a lengthy process here. Uh, I think in our case, we're spent, I know it's ridiculous, but we're spending six to eight hours a page 
we're persnickety about quality in our content. And I think we can pretty consistently nail six, maybe five. But I am definitely not going to use any kind of open AI uh, software to write the actual content. It is a tool, just like SEMrush, right? Like any SEO tool, it is a tool. Think of it as a tool. Don't think of it as a solution. Think of it as a tool. It will help, but it won't do the job for you. I think writers are always going to be there. Their job is just going to become more editorial than researchers. I think that's going to be the biggest shift in the uh, marketplace.